We don't have to wait until the battle's over. We can shout now. We thank you because the fight has been fixed. And we come out on top every time. Oh, we thank you, Father, because you're God and beside you there's none other. Your anointed word is what keeps us secure and safe. It leads and guides us into all truths. Your word is our life. And our life is in your word. Father, bless the word today. I want ears to hear, hearts to receive, Father, what you're about to share with us this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. And every heart said, thank God. Thank God. Amen. Amen. You can take your seats if you can. Mm. I just want to say one thing. If that last ministry from our dancers didn't need you, then you're dead. No. You need to go to you need to call Rhodes. He needs to dress you. Because they ministered this morning. In both songs. They made her ministry. Hallelujah. You can shout win. Right now, amen. I don't care what you're faced with or what you're going through. You can shout right now. Amen. Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing my buddy here today. I'm so happy to see him. He came on up from the city, finally. Amen. We're so glad to see him. But we're glad to see everybody too. But God is getting ready. God is doing great things. Amen. And why do I say this? Because there's so many people he had fought because of what God's about to do. No, because of what God's doing. It's a, it's, it's a setup for you to be blessed with God. Amen. Amen. And uh, I love when they were dancing to, uh, there's a champion that lives within me. Yes. He's given me what? Authority. authority. Yes. But you know what happens to us? We don't use the authority. Yes. We know it's no, no, we hear that it's there. We read that it's there. But until you believe that it's there, you have no authority. Amen. Amen. You're a champion. Hey, every one of us in here is champion. Why? Because God said so. And he has what we need to be champions and for us to shout now. Amen. Okay, this morning we're going to be coming to you out of uh, Acts chapter 12. Yeah, chapter 12. And uh, we're going to see what God has to say to us this morning. First of all, let me tell you something about the book of Acts. It's an interesting book. The book of Acts is when the Holy Spirit makes way into the earth. And then it filled earthen vessels. And with that very act, we have all we have all we need to be successful in life. Amen. Amen. And do you know that the devil's afraid of you? Okay, some of you know. Others are afraid of the devil. And he's been defeated. Did I say he's going to be defeated? No. He has been what? Defeated. But for you to understand that, you have to do what? Believe it. Believe it. It's time to believe what God say and tell everybody else to shut up. Amen. I, I am so filled today with, with gratitude because God has uh, not allowed me to be distracted. Amen. And I have heard so much word to Apostle Pastor Rudolph about distractions. They come to take your focus off of what God wants to do for you. Well, what do you mean, uh, distractions? And then he comes in every, he comes in not, he doesn't come to you and say, look, I'm the enemy. I've come to fight you today. So put on your boxing gloves. He don't do that. No, he'll get on your job and they'll start nitpicking at stuff. Oh, come on now. Or oh, your, your kids will call you up with a bunch of nonsense. I didn't say my kids. I said your kids, okay? Because after all, I birthed angels. Amen. In the outfield. Amen. Hallelujah. But you have to you have to understand, he's very cunning. You will be promised something, and it seems like it's it's not going to happen. Now, apostle, now, apostle, I prophesied that 17 years ago. I'm about a I'm about 99 years old. But it's coming to pass. Yeah. Because God said so. Yeah. You don't believe me? You go, if you could just wake up Sarah. <laughs> Mrs. Sarah, wake up. What happened to you? You were old. Waxed old. 
and you knew yourself that your husband couldn't do nothing but look at you. But God said, you're going to have a wife, a child. God stirred up something. Oh, God stirred up something. And here comes a bouncing baby boy. Because who said so? God said so. You need to know what God said about it. You need to repeat what God said about it and tell the devil, you just need to shut up. Because I didn't say so, but God said so. Man is limited. God is unlimited. Amen, amen. See, some things you weren't ready for. Okay, some things I wasn't ready for. So God took time. In, in, in the fullness of time, what God promised me came to pass. And the other promise is going to come to pass because who said so? God said so. That, and that's not even the message. Okay, it says here in chapter 12 of Acts, did what happened? And the only act they could perform was through the Holy Spirit. The only act you and I can perform is through the Holy Spirit. So all of us got the gift. But you need to stir it up. Wall, you sure need to stir it up. Because there's nothing like a big old pot of soup with all the ingredients in the bottom and you taking off the top layer which is nothing but water. Oh, but I put some heat under that stuff and I can stir it up. You got some stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. It says here, now about the time, about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. The devil would stretch forth his hands mm -hmm. to vex folk. I just want to tell you what you're going through some stuff. Because he knows you're saved, he's going to stretch forth his hand to vex you. And you need to be able to identify what's going on and laugh at it. Say, this ain't nothing but a trick. And nothing should surprise you through our Daniel fast. Amen. Because God's going to do great things through this. Many healings are coming through the Daniel yeah. fast. Many deliverance are coming through this. Things that we've asked God to do is going to happen through this fast. And it's amazing at this particular time that God chose to do this. Pastor Rudolph and I were talking last night. She said, you know, it's amazing how God picked a particular time. Because normally we do this in January. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But God said, oh, not so. I have an appointed time to do what I'm going to do for my people. Everything has to be lined up. Everything has to be in place. Because what God's plan is, is a foolproof plan that the devil can't mess with. He can try, but God has already given us the victory. Okay? So stop thinking about that. that oh, you better not have a pot roast at home. <laughs> don't, let, don't let there's a pot roasting. But don't, don't think about all that stuff. And then what? Through this fast, don't think about what you can't eat. Because that'll bind you. Oh, I can't have any sugar. So be it. You had enough. You had enough. You know, the last day before the fast, y'all eat pound cake, you ate raw, a cheesecake, you ate cake cake, so you had enough. So it's time to put that thing aside and say, Lord, I'm going through this, and I've got wise with it, and I'm going to make it happen. Okay? And God will. Okay. Anyway. So that's what Harry did. And it said, number two, and he did what? Brother John with us. And because he saw it pleased the Jews. See, when you start bullying folk, some folks get happy over that. They do. And they start giving you, you know, a little praise. Like, Good job. You need to kill him. Kill a few more. He was a terrorist. So he said, I made happy. Watch what I do now. That's how the enemy does. Okay? So it says here, and it, because it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to do what? Then were the days of unleavened bread. So they must have been doing some kind of special Daniel feast. Maybe they've done Daniel feast now. Because they're eating unleavened bread too. So anyway, it says here. And when he had what? He put him in and tending what? Now how he's going to do his stuff after Easter. Peter therefore was kept where? But what? Prayer was made without ceasing in the church of God. And when Herod would have what? 
the same night, what happened? Where? By what? And what? And behold, the angel of the Lord did what? And? 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 What? And? 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 What? And? And? But? When they what? They? Mm -hmm. Which what? And? 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 Okay, a whole bunch of stuff is happening here. And the key verse we're going to be work, working with, that God's going to be working with today, is verse 10. They came unto the iron gate, which opened to them of its own. And the supporting scripture is going to be out of 1 Samuel 15 and 20. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. And the subject is going to be, God has the key to the iron gate. God has the key to the iron gate. I just want to, you know, I know what I've written down here, and I'm hoping I can stay with it, but if God takes it another way, so be it. But many of us have iron gates that we are going to go, we want to go through. And many times you think so far ahead of that iron gate that you miss out what God is doing right now. Because you have to get through the iron gate. He said, oh, I'm okay, but I, but oh, God, there's, there's that bill that they told me if I don't pay it by so-and-so, so-and-so, they're going to be so-and-so, so-and-so. That might be your iron gate. Your iron ga gate might be, you know you want to finish your degree, but there's so many obstacles in your way before you can do that. And that got you so distracted that you're looking at the problem of the iron gate Instead of letting God take you through the process to prepare you to go through the iron gate. So everybody has an iron gate. Yes, yes. If they don't, they have one coming. <laughs> okay, you just keep living, you'll see. The iron gate. And old Maud is not waiting at that iron gate. So we'll leave Maud out of this one, okay? So anyway... Well, you have to understand, there's, five, there's six keynotes you need to, to dwell on con, concerning the, uh, God having the key to the iron gate. Number one, everyone has an iron gate. Even I. I'm okay until I think down the road, oh boy. When you get to doing, oh boy, that is your iron gate. Okay? Some of you need a job. Guess what that is? Iron gate. Iron gate. Some of you want to go on to higher uh, levels of education. Guess what that is? The iron, iron gate. Some of you are looking for an opportunity, and it has not yet come. And that is your what? Iron, iron gate. But God's going to show us about those iron gates today. So number one, everyone has an iron gate. Number two, the iron gate is that hard thing that's between you and your breakthrough. The iron gate is that hard thing between, that's between you and your breakthrough. Number three. Oh, I know. Let me slow down. Because some of you can't write that fast and some of you can't type that fast. Because you know, we got these typists in here now. You know, sometimes they have one that you can speak to and it just. Yeah. It's called the dragon? Yeah. Oh, I don't think I like that. <laughs> oh, no. So I don't bring any dragons to church. So anyway, anyway, number three. The iron gate will halt your progress in God. The iron gate will halt your progress in God regarding what you need and want. We're talking about the iron gate. 
and that God has the key to the Aaron Cave. Four. God knows about the Iron Gate. <laughs> Sometimes we forget who's in charge. God knows about your Iron Gate. God knows about your Iron Gate. Yes. Hear ye, hear ye. God knows about your Iron Gate. I don't think he does because it hasn't opened yet. But God knows about your Iron Gate. And number five. God prepares the way. God prepares the way. For the iron gate to open for you. Okay? And number six, God has the key. God has the key. Okay. Okay, I'm, we're going to talk about the background of these scriptures first concerning background knowledge. Some of us lack background knowledge concerning why we're going through. Background knowledge means you need information to understand why you're in the position you're in, yeah. how you got there, and why you got there. That is called background knowledge. That's like you trying to take a law class when you haven't had any background knowledge about what law is all about. If you do that, since the Keith can tell you, you'll fail the law. A lot of this because you don't have enough background knowledge. Okay? Saints need to know background knowledge because of what is happening to you. And we have been trying to give the saints of God in this church background knowledge about where you're being fired. Right. But why are you going through? Why are you facing certain situations? You need to have background knowledge in order to succeed and progress through to what God wants to do for you and how God wants to help you. Got it? Okay, now, first of all, do you understand and know that the devil's afraid of you? Yes. Yes. I don't know every time, it's like I always get fought, and I never get to the other level. It's because you don't understand that you have power. Mm -hmm. And the dancers told us this morning, we have the authority. Yeah. That's the background knowledge you need to know and understand that you are using the authority given to you to be overcomers. You've allowed the situation to bind you instead of you binding it. And you, in doing so, you're missing the whole key objective to what God wants to do for you. I'm talking about the key to the iron gate. Okay? Now, let's, let's look at uh, Peter's situation. Now, listen. The de Herod, who was representing the devil, was afraid of Peter. Okay. All right. Let me slow down. When the whole, when when the engine of the Holy Spirit came to the earth, it gave the disciples all the overcoming power they needed. It was now the power of God residing in them, and because of that power. Peter, they existed in Peter, they were afraid of him. Now, here's a little sidebar. I like to be sidebar. The state of New York now, and all the educators in the building know this, we, teachers have to have evidence that they're teaching. It's called evidence-based. Evidence now, because the evidence base to show you why the devil was afraid of Peter. First of all, they threw him in prison. <laughs> Now, if he didn't have anything to be afraid of, if they didn't have to be afraid of him, why did they throw him in prison? He wouldn't do anything but preach the word. But they wanted him in prison because they were afraid of him. Number two, four quadrant of, of, of soldiers were around him. This is one man. Do you know what quadrant means? That means a whole bunch of folk. For one man, all this was put in place because they were afraid of something. And that was the Holy Spirit that was in them, in him, that they were afraid of. That invisible power that they couldn't quite see or quite understand had them afraid. People of God, you got that same power in you. And folks will fear you if you would stand up and have faith in God. And let God handle the situation. Instead of running around here boo-hooing about it and fussing about it and almost cussing about it. 
Oh no, Pastor Malloy, how dare you say that kind of thing? Listen, listen, you'd reckon that old man to be dead. But if that devil digs deep enough, Good Lord. you might say something. And it was not hallelujah, that's the first part of that. But God is good. That we pause, we, we have enough Holy Ghost to keep that thing under control. Yes. Okay, then he was sleeping between two soldiers. They were afraid of Peter. Okay, that was number three. Because I know folk in here, he's eight number. Really number, number three, number four, he was bound with two chains. And on top of that, number five, they had uh, doorkeepers by the door. Now, Peter was in quite a fix. All because they were afraid of what resided in him. Do you think God saw the situation? Of course God did. Yeah. And God began right then, because folks were praying somewhere, mm -hmm. he began right then to orchestrate the deliverance of Peter. Yes. God did not send a helicopter. No. <laughs> he did not send in a SWAT team. Mm -hmm. God sent in an angel yes. that would tip it on in. No, he didn't. He walked in there. He didn't, tip it. He didn't have to tip it on. Then folks fell asleep. Their souls all fell asleep. They would know they had Peter secure. But obedience is better than sacrifice. Yeah, amen. And that angel went in and smote Peter. Hey. And Peter responded immediately. He wasn't like you all. I'm tired. What's that? I'm tired. Who hit me? I'm tired. Or he didn't say, was that God? You know, we get stupid. God wants to do something for us. We pray for God to do it. God begins to work on it and in it. Then we begin to question it. I think God puts his hands on his side and says, My poor people. They asked me to do it. I'm beginning to do it. Now the question is it me. God is not going to do what you need him to do if it's not him. The devil's not going to lose you, set you free. All he's going to tell you, you stupid. And you know what you do? You repeat it. I'm so stupid. I'm too stupid to even live. See, we go around repeating stuff like that. What the devil said. Uh, teacher tell you, you can't learn. We go home and tell you, I just can't learn. I need an IEP. An IEP is an individual education plan. But if your parents would tell you at home, you're smart. There you, go. you walk out of that, out of your house in the morning, say, I know I'm smart. Ain't nothing, no, ain't nothing dumb about me. I, I, they don't come any smarter than me. Not that you're being arrogant, but it's building your self-esteem that you are a designer's original. Amen. I told someone that last week. You're a designer's original. No one's like you. No one can be a better you than you. And God has a special plan for you. You and I need to stop comparing ourselves to somebody else's standards. Amen. I'm going to repeat that. You need to stop Comparing yourself, and I, no, I, I never had that problem. I really never did have that problem. Trying to say, I hope I'm as good. I hope I'm as good. Oh, please, I know better. And then I don't know if you can do it. Well, I remember telling me, I don't know if you can do that. I said, did you do it? Then I know I can do it. That ain't no question. But what is it? Because it's the power that is, is, that is within me. That encourages me and builds up my self-esteem that I have someone greater in me than he that is in the world. Yeah. The word says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. But we can't take that just for what it says. We've got to understand it and put it into practice and mean it. Amen. Because it's going to test you. I can do all things. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Then here comes your test. To see if you can do all things. Oh no, I can't do this. This is too hard. And the word says, is there anything too hard for God? Right. God always has a comeback for us. To step on every, every, every obstacle should be a stepping stone to your victory in God. Oh, I know. I ain't saying the right thing. 
I'm saying the excellent thing because this is all God. This is what God wants to encourage you with. So they were afraid of Peter. So let me tell you something. He's afraid of you. He knows if you kick on to this thing, he knows that you have bulldog tenacity holding on power concerning what God's going to do. He would be, he'll be running away from you. But some of you sit there banter with him. I think, you know, there's one story which I just don't know why they teach him in school. The little red choo-choo train. I think I can. I think I can. I ain't never been there. I know I can. I know I will. Because greater is he that's in me than he's, they can take that choo-choo train and give it to somebody else. Because the conductor of my train does never say, I think I can. Because I know that I can't. But greater is he that's in me than he's in the world. And I know that I can. Because I am more than a... Who said so? God said so. And we need to put that thing into practice. Even when you're faced with a tough situation, which is your iron gate. Even that situation, God will swing that door open if he knows that you have faith in him. Here's what happens. When you show God that you mean business with him, he takes that iron gate and he cracks it open just a little bit. So you can look there and say, oh, there's an opening. There's been a breach there. Then you can walk right through it. When Peter got to that iron gate, Peter wasn't sitting back in the front and saying, you know, I know I can go through. I know I can jump up. I know the chains can fall off. I know I can put on my sandals and gird myself the way I'm supposed to. But you know, after I get to the second world, there's an, iron, there's an iron gate there. He didn't ponder on that iron gate. He got up and began to obey the instruction that was given to him. Yeah. If you learn to obey the instruction, which is through the word of God, it don't have to be me preaching or the preachers preaching it. You can read it for yourself. And if you can read that thing, understand what God is saying, and do it, you will get the victory that you need. There you go. Every time. Who said so? God said so. If God said it, then I'm done with it. It's all about God. I don't care what happens. If God says something, the devil cannot breach the promises of God. And you need to believe that, understand that, stand on that, and then watch God perform for you. Amen. And you're going to suffer, because the word says, for I reckon that the suffering of this present time is not worthy to compare hallelujah. with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Amen. Hallelujah. Can you shout hallelujah? hallelujah. Can you shout hallelujah? hallelujah. Hey, God's going to I do things. God has the key. God has the key. And the reason Peter was able to get the keys to the kingdom from Jesus because he knew who Jesus was. He was the Christ, the son of the living God. Amen. And on that fact, he said, Peter, because you know that, I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom. He said, I'm going to open up everything, go anywhere you want to go, because that's the key to the kingdom. Amen. I'm sure that after the thing came to pass, that Peter was wondering, well, did I see a vision? Let me pinch myself. And God, oh, let me tell you something. God's going to do so many things like that for everyone in here who believes. That you're going to have to pinch yourself. And say, oh my God, is this really happening for me? God's really doing this for me. A lot of you to understand. There's a lot of blessings that God has in store for you. If you could just be obedient and do what God says do, you'll be able to attain those blessings that God has for you. You can't rely on man. Man will fail you. The word, the, the, uh, the song, ready wrote a song? Uh, 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 Jesus will carry you through. Yield not to temptation for yielding is sin. Each victory will help you some other to win. God wants to give you the victory, not in some situations, but in all. all situations. But you have to walk as a victor and not a victim. Some folks want to be pitied. Yes. They want to be pitied. Ring, ring, ring. How you doing? I don't know. I, I, just, I just don't feel victorious today. And you know what I tell them? And you're not. See, folks don't call me. <laughs> He'll call me, but I've got a word. I do have a word for it. And the word is this. God can do all things. Yes. God can move anything. Yes. The word says if you speak to them, be moved, that's done. Not only will it get away, it will skip away. Yes. But instead, you skip it away. Okay, let me stop. 
Now every door has a key that will open it. Every door has a key yes, sir. that will open it. Every employer's business that has employees distributes a key to that employee so they can enter into their workplace. Yes. Now wherever you work, uh, don't they have a key to get you in there? Because yes. you, you couldn't get in, you couldn't work. However, there's a master key. There's a master key. That gives you access to every room in the house. Back in the voice's time, they called it the skeleton key. <laughs> but since then, they they bust the skin. It's a master key, and that opens every door. And I have a master key to my building. I can go in in, in, in and out of any time I want to. Because and why did I get that master key? Because they trusted me. They said you follow the rules, the regulations, you did everything the way we told you to do it. And because of that, I'm going to give you a key that will get you in any place you need to be and want to be. And God is saying today, if you would just follow the word that I've given you, obey my commandments, I'm going to give you a key to the kingdom. And any place you need to be, you'll be able to get into it because I can trust you. You have proven yourself and you have interest in any place you need to be. Oh, see, I don't know. Can you, can you say amen? Amen. Can you say hallelujah? hallelujah. Can you say I believe that? I do believe that. And that's what God wants to do. We need to start walking out of here ready, ready to do the will of God. And the first time we will, an arrow of, of, of something wow. is shot at us, cow back. Because if doubt slips in, it, it just contaminates faith. And people of God, this is a faith walk. Because we walk by not by sight. sight will get you focused on the wrong thing. Because it will look one way and it's really something else. Yes. And the devil knows that we are big eyed believers in what we see. That's what messed up Eve. She'd be fine today if she could have just gone by how pretty that situation looked and left that apple on or whatever she ate. They said it was an apple. I don't know. It might have been a pear. But anyway, they've got to get them. We've got to learn to focus on God and start focusing on the situation around us. He convinced uh, Eve to take the forbidden fruit, and she was told not to. Because if you do, you will do what? And here comes Oopoop a do. Adam with his simple self. Didn't have to eat that. I'm going to go across there. He's over there. I'm going to, I'm going to bite it too. <laughs> and messed up everything. Yeah. Man said, we can't blame the woman. Man got stupid. And he said to his side, he might have been able to pull her back. I just said, now the word didn't say that. <laughs> I did say he might have been able to. But he was worse than Eve. Eve was overtaken in sin. He willingly transgressed and did it. Which tells you in your walk, if you start transgressing, willingly do what you know is not to do, that is what weakens your faith. That is what stops the move of God. Because God's not going to bless your mess. God's not going to bless your mess. If he did that, then why get straight? Why get it right? He said, you'll get blessed anyway. I can do I can do the, the hookah, hookah, whatever, and I can still just... No, 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 no. There are parameters and standards that God has in place for us to be blessed. And as Peter began to get blessed of God with the knowledge of God, he was blessed with the, 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 the keys to the kingdom of God. All right. Let me hurry and close this up because you want to go home and have a peach and a pear. <laughs> And the apple, but don't eat any honey. <laughs> Boy, when I saw honey on that list, I called my wife saying, "Hallelujah!" And I don't even like honey, oh, but that was a that oh, was a way of proving up something. I said, "My oatmeal will be good tomorrow." I'm telling you. But they put a quick stop to that. No, it got to be natural. Now, people of God, until we get closer to God and know who He is, we will continue to have struggles in our walk. We need to walk with God every day and have communion with Him every day. As we do this, 
then the iron gate in our the iron gates in our lives will automatically open. We will not know it, every we may not know everything that God is doing, but we have learned to have faith that er, that in Him everything will be worked out for our benefit. And we and when we come to those iron gates, we will begin to realize that it is a small thing in the eyes of God. God strengthens us. Look, God has strengthened you through every wooden gate. Every picket fence. You've been able to cross over. Because they weren't so difficult. But if you go over enough picket fences, we get to the iron gate, you say, that's nothing. I just jumped over 1,700 picket fences so I could go through the iron gate. And God toughens you up and strengthens you through those small struggles. So when the big struggle comes, you can say, hey, he took me through the small one. I know he'll take me through the big one. Because who has the key? God, God. Only God has the key. You know what? We run to man thinking man has the key. Let me tell you something. That same man you run to has his own problem. Yeah. Yeah. And all he wants you to do is get, get away from him. He might tell you anything. Just get away from him. I'm, here I'm struggling myself and I can come over there and help you. Oh, no. No, 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 no. You get your own. I'll get mine. We'll pray for each other. But we both will get through it. Uh, but I'm not, I don't mean that in a negative way. We do need fellowship. To strengthen one another. But we have to focus on our own. Stay in your lane. Yeah. Let God take you to your destiny that he has planned for you. Which is good. Okay. Let me see this. Let me say this. Through this fast, we're going to need God's help to fight the enemy. And that hindering things. Okay. No, no, no. God says it this way. Through this fast. We are going to need to need God's help to help us fight the enemy. And that thing that's in our meeting. Okay. Fight the enemy and that thing that's in a me. Like in the Italian, the people will say, it's an enemy. So there's some stuff in you that you need to fix. Some of y'all talk too much. Oh, now, blessed quietness, <laughs> holy quietness. No, there are some. You're in your mouth too much. That's why God can't tell you nothing. God has secrets he wants to share with you. But if you have, if you have loose lips that sink ships, he's not going to. And never develop the spirit of appeasement. Because it will bind you and you'll lose every time. What am I talking about? And many of you, any history buffs in here? Remember Chamberlain, Chamberlain in England? Yeah. yeah, Germany. Yes. He, he tried to appease Hitler. That's right. And Hitler took, almost took over Europe because mm -hmm. they tried to appease him. So the spirit of appeasement needs to be destroyed. Yeah. Don't be appeasing the enemy. If I do this, he might not bother me. Uh, he won't bother you for that minute. But he'll find you sleeping and so tear him on your weak and choke out the blessings of God. Yeah. Don't dance with the devil. Don't grab his hand and do the twist. He'll make you do the slop at the end. Remember those dances, the slop with the feet. Remember the slop? Could you do the slop? Oh, man. I had a brother could do the, could do the slop. Boy, I learned to do the slop and I had some fun. Let me stop. Anyway, we don't want to, uh, to, 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 to contaminate our faith in God just to appease the enemy is what I'm saying. Because God has the key to your future and the key to your success in him. In my conclusion, say hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, in my conclusion, this, God said this. You may be asking yourself, how can I gain access to the master's key? Number one, let God be God. Yes. You stop trying to be God. Let God be God. Because above him there's no other. Number two, turn your warship. The warship, you get aboard mm -hmm. a ship and, and start having war. Turn your warship into worship. Don't be like the carnival ship. Boy, two of those bad boys dipped and flipped. And folks still getting on carnival. And the one that, 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 that was in Europe that tipped over, it was related to carnival. Oh, I just stopped that. 
<laughs> oh, I'm sorry. And to come down with another ship to stay away from. Titanic 2. Yeah. Now, what crazy person <laughs> would get on Titanic 2? And it's going to take the same journey, the same wow. map journey that wow. the first one went through. Now, learn from your mistakes, people. <laughs> If you've been floating about getting in trouble, why would you continue doing that? Why would you keep doing it? You see what you've been doing hasn't been working. And you can continue to do that crazy stuff. You've got to be careful. Change up something. That's Titanic too. There'll be fun in the North Sea. Okay, anyway. And that's nothing but trick the enemy. You gotta be careful with some of that stuff. Anyway, let me stop that. Okay, number number three. Trust in the Lord with all your might and lean not to your own understanding. And the last one is this. Let me see, maybe it was five. And it was. Number four, have faith in God, not people. The arm of flesh will fail you. And you did not trust your own. And last but not least, when the time is right and you have prayed and done all you can do on your part, then God will move his mighty hand to do the impossible and open up your iron gate. Give God a hand clap praise. That's all God gave me this morning. I'm like, oh, I'm